Ford of the Doctor of Thesis Defense of Dr. Arne Ford from uh, about last uh, fall. Um, he was using concept of uh, particle in the box uh, as a way to interpret his results on quantum dot, semiconductor quantum dot. So the panel on the left summarizes the basic equations, which uh, we are more or less expected to know from the uh, top of the head. The panel on the right shows density of states, which you are now acquainted through uh, our exercise with Wasp and Gaussian, where red uh, area corresponds to uh, occupied orbitals, white area to unoccupied, and here are several orbitals. So this figure is mimicking results of ab initio results, but it is not ab initio. It is made just by pen and paper equations. Um, so it shows orbitals that look like spherical, like S type, P type, and, and so forth. But what is interesting, the offsets uh, between the energies of these orbitals, if converted in density of states, show this increasing density as one goes away from the band gap. So the panel on the, so yellow things are orbitals. Uh, these little peaks and field areas are eigen energies for occupied and unoccupied, unoccupied uh, states. The panel on the left summarizes uh, background equations for, for this. So the concept of particle in the box means that outside of a box, and box can be a piece of semiconductor or the um, conjugated oligomer as, as you were doing in your homework, where the potential inside is approximately zero and outside is approximately infinity. And then for square box, square rectangular box, the uh, eigenstates have a form of product of uh, three sine functions, each of which in each of three dimensions, where the amount of fringes in, in each direction is controlled by quantum number, number X, number Y, number Z. And by selecting these three numbers, uh, one can get different uh, quantum states. Um, Stephen, would you please uh, enable camera if you're here? I just want to have a brief yeah, hello, conversation. So remember you were doing a, a little talk in uh, advanced PCAM, right? So uh, please have a look on a slide, on, on the slide where I'm pointing with, with the finger. So the wave function here has a denominator which has Lx, Ly, Lz. So it is a little feature that you uh, skipped or intentionally or unintentionally missed in, in your talk. So three-dimensional box does not need to be cubic. It can, uh, it may have different size along x, y, and z. And uh, for speaking about nanostructures, it can be a deciding factor. Okay. Um, I'm not intending to go over this material in, in details. It's only like a little, uh, how to say, promotional commercial ad in the middle of the movie. Okay. So uh, next thing. So while this movie is playing, I will try to uh, tell a little story about it. So again, this one is uh, referring to your homework. It is very much referring to personally to Stephen, uh, who was doing similar talk in uh, PCAM uh, recently. So uh, on the previous slide, there were sizes, LX, LY, and LZ for the box, right? 
So we can have a box like pizza box, uh, a box for ski, uh, a box for TV set, and they may have different form factor. They may have different aspect ratios along X, Y, and Z. So the electron inside this box, box may have multiple quantum states. And if you summarize them in a form of DOS, this DOS may take quite symmetrical shapes if the size of the box is, 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 uh, is symmetric. So I'm going to stop the movie at the very beginning and uh, make a little comment and then go forward. Stop. So if the box is very small, then there are quite offset individual peaks, right? As soon as we go forward towards um, conjugated oligomer, same as, as you guys did in, in the homework, the states become denser, the band gap becomes smaller, and it takes a specific shape or as a, like shark teeth or seal on, on a board. And if one continues, as soon as we go get from the uh, one dimensional to like pizza box, two dimensional square thing, the density of states takes shape of, of stairs, right? You see it. Amir, make sense? Okay. And uh, yeah, thank you. And as we, uh, as we keep going, uh, towards three-dimensional box. This interference, this uh, contribution of many, many quantum states make the, make the density of states of the, of the shape that can be uh, fit into the equation uh, square root of energy. So the number density of states is proportional to square root of energy. So this feature, density of states as square root of energy or energy into the power one half will be used in our today's lecture in the uh, material about uh, Thomas Fermi theory. So I will try to provide derivation of the thing, but if you miss the derivation or if you're bored to listen, just uh, take this little take, take home message depending on the size and aspect ratio, the of state takes different shapes. And in the symmetric cube, it is a square root of energy. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, here is just a little summary from undergraduate TCAM uh, class that I will partially repeat, but I will be running uh, like crazy. So here are just two quantum numbers. The quantum numbers define quantum states. So pair a, a, a circle, a little dot. No, 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 no. A little dot on this picture is a quantum state. It's uh, here in, in this, it is um, defined by two numbers, but in actual life, it is defined by three numbers, right? So each quantum state, each orbital has uh, uh, different quantum numbers and different energies. And density of states means to count how many orbitals have the same energy. And uh, there will be derivations showing then a thin line on the surface of a circle corresponds to several states that are degenerate that have the same energy. And as we increase the energy, we have bigger and bigger circle and larger and larger degeneracy. Therefore, density of states may grow as we get higher in energy. When you had uh, the one dimensional string, it was a different dependence. Okay. So uh, now we actually start the meeting and um, I'm going to minimize uh, the uh, faces, but 
or even hide but please raise hands or if if i will be uh, not sure if we have a good uh, understanding and agreement i will bring up the faces and ask for your opinion so in this cor uh, course we take theory background combine it with uh, software and hardware and uh, use pre-built molecular models to compute observables and compare to experiment here are recordings and some um, list of the lectures from previous years so today we are covering free electron gas thomas fermi theory um numbering changes because we have different amount of uh, presentations here is the list of uh, tentative list of presentations that we need to do in about two maybe three weeks um so based on our labs with wasp and i will chop them further to account for amount of um, attendees of the class just for for your information so here is the summary of what we are doing um both heart reform and density functional theory have a goal to predict total energy so lower row on this uh, slide um Hartree Fock theory and a family of so called wave function theories refer to the concept of wave function. So, in Hartree Fock, you were building the Slater determinant and out of Slater determinant, finding total energy. The density functional theory wants to avoid any knowledge about wave function. Instead of wave, wave function is bad and not comfortable because uh, it depends like Slater determinant it's depends on so many independent degrees of freedom position of first electron three Cartesian projections uh, position of second third so a, a lot of independent variables even with um, there are some approximations but general wave function is expected to be expensive density functional theory uses only one position of electron so the density functional theorem in one sentence is that if one knows distribution of density as function of only three cartesian positions it allows to obtain total energy with the same precision as in any uh, wave function theory so this is the main idea that we will be uh, discussing and working with uh, like for two or three weeks so density instead of wave function so here is the uh, quick summary of what we need to do in this chapter so definitions background th uh, theory which is thomas fermi we will cover today two theorems that prove with mathematical precision that knowledge of density allows to find total energy then practical algorithm which will be formulated as a full chart same as for geometry optimization and uh, hartree fock theory and then uh, the protocols to compute pra practical observables that uh, allow to analyze properties of materials okay so here we do have uh, several layers from uh, several years of definitions so um let me waste a little bit of time for the sake of uh, mutual understanding between between uh, each other um anyone wants to let's vote who likes the the word functional lift hand or show a uh, thumb up with uh, uh, zoom who does not okay thank you Haley. thank you uh, okay thank you amir so uh, who doesn't like the word functional do not hesitate okay hanman thank you and who is more or less okay but not sure okay yeah thank you anand 
th th thank you, Stephen. So, um, Haley lifted two hands. Haley, would you try to unmute microphone and just try to define what is functional in, in a way language? Um, a functional is like a function of a function. Super. Yes, correct. Examples? I'm sure you have plenty. Uh, no, well, uh, I, I know your skill of uh, picking up words from uh, what is being discussed or uh, information that is on slide. Can you pick up an example of functional just from what is shown on the, on the slide? Number of electrons? Yes, excellent, perfect. Thank you so much. So uh, let me continue uh, just to opening the idea that Haley brought to all of us. So um, we know that I'm looking on the first line. If you take absolute value squared of the molecular orbital, there will be either probability distribution or in terms of uh, uh, density interpretation, which is not well, not common, but it is practically help helpful. It is uh, amount of electrons in a certain point of space probability distribution. So if you integrate this density, this uh, orbital absolute value squared over the whole space, or uh, we will get one, right? Because the orbital is occupied by one electron. Uh, and now if we uh, take all occupied orbitals from one to homo, and add them together, add together densities of this orbital. So I'm looking on the line three. Uh, it will be just summation of all uh, occupied orbitals and we can call it total density. If we eventually decide to integrate this summation, then integration of each orbital will give one. If you have up and down spins uh, on each orbital, we need factor two. And then this integration will give two times uh, from one to homo. So two times homo will be number of electrons. So by integrating density over three-dimensional space, we get a number of electrons. So this is an uh, example of a, a functional uh, in the following sense. In regular, like uh, high school and uh, freshman calculus, we typically define functions. So we have y as function of x. Here, our function, our number of electrons, does depend not on a single number, but does depend on a function, on a spatial distribution of, uh, of probability. So in this sense, it is, as Hayley correctly told, it is function of a function. So the very lower line number of electron is a functional of density, which depends on position. And there is a common agreement in the field to use uh, rectangular brackets to define the difference from uh, usual functions. Okay. So we got definitions of what is functional but we do not know density functional theory yet it's a little bigger thing i'm going to hide uh, the uh, risks and go forward so here are like thomas and fermi biographies and here is our plan that uh, i have to complete in 28 minutes so it, it will be, uh, I, I will try my best, but it will be quite intense. So we need to visit each of these eight points. So if I spend like three minutes per point, then it will be like 24 minutes, which I doubt is possible, but I'll try my best. So. 
Thomas Fermi theory poses the same goal as uh, uh, we quantum chemists pose to find total energy for a system of many electrons. But in contrast to a real life, so we in this course and in our attempt to describe materials, we have uh, two, com two complications. First, the universe is filled with positively charged ions that attract electrons. And second, electrons do repel each other, right? So uh, Thomas and Fermi were playing a theoretical toy, maybe uh, for, for describing some limiting cases. What if we have a universe that doesn't have ions, that filled only with electrons? It can be true if electrons have so high energy that it is much bigger than energy of attraction to an ion. Second uh, waiver. Assume that electrons do not repel each other. So they are independent particles that can, can come through each other without repulsion. It also looks a little crazy, but if we have very low density of electrons, they like a gas in uh, uh, thermodynamics, ideal gas where there are no collisions. They just pass through each other because density is very low. So uh, Thomas Fermi, is asking for the total energy of system of many electrons, assuming that they're not attracted to any ions and they do not repel from each other. Just uh, obey the exclusion principle and that's it. So the result that we are going to get in like 25 minutes, hopefully, will be that uh, total energy can be expressed in terms of charge density, meaning number of electrons per volume, right? So in our uh, mid, uh, mid school physics, there was an Ar Archimedes law for buoyancy where like there was a density of solid things mass divided by volume and here we, we instead of mass we have a number of electrons divided by volume so there will be a very elegant equation that formulates the total energy as a function of density functional of of density of electrons so we artificially chop this universe on the cubes so here they are symbolized by uh, cyan and orange uh, boxes so all boxes are equal they they are symmetric with size uh, lower case l in x y and z then the volume of one cube will be l cubed and since electrons do not interact they are homogeneously spread everywhere uh, total number of electrons in this universe is n capital and amount of electrons in one cube is dn so the density will be homogeneous and defined as uh, dn divided by uh, l cubed when we will be projecting these ideas to real life density will change as we go from point to point here in thomas fermi theory it is homogeneously spread so uh, the steps that we are going to cover, uh, we need to introduce the players, declare variables, and uh, we will speak about uh, Fermi energy and Fermi momentum. Then um, we are going to establish connection between uh, these new variables and amount of electrons in one cube then inverse this relation then next two points will be established relation between energy of all electrons in one cube and this fermi energy 
and then we are going to perform summation over all cubes and get the final answer. It looks simple, but there will be some underwater stone. So if you select to follow the derivation, uh, prepare to concentrate. And this little um, running board will show our, our project uh, progress. Uh, feel free to stop me anytime. Okay, so chop universe on boxes. Uh, and our final goal is add together energy of each box and make summation. Or ener energy in, in individual box must depend on this fraction, number of electrons per size of the of the box. So here we need uh, we, I have to I need to believe that everyone is very happy with the concept of a particle in three-dimensional box. So uh, please confirm with a thumb up or a zoom uh, that you have general agreement and understanding of the of the particle in the box concept. And if not, you can find it uh, online and in materials. Please just confirm. Uh, Amir, Anand. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and then just uh, when, when you have time, try to look over the materials for Wikipedia, just get more ideas. So, the potential energy is not present, is absent. So, all energy is composed of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy for one uh, degree of freedom is mass times velocity squared over two, right? Or in terms of momentum, it is. Uh, the one that I'm showing right now, momentum squared over two masses. And if we are um, converting this equation into quantum language, the uh, momentum is the higher, the bigger the quantum number. So basically this quantum numbers correspond to momentum, right? The bigger the quantum number, the quicker particle is, is moving. And proportionality coefficient includes Planck constant and uh, size of the box over two. So uh, if you would need only this equation, Stephen would be correct a, a month ago in his presentation. So here we assume sizes of all boxes are equal. So we have no Lx, Ly, Lz, just L squared. But there are, quantum, there are three quantum numbers, and x, and y, and z, because the electron has in, makes independent motion in each of three directions, three components of uh, momentum, three components of velocity. Therefore, energy does depend on these three quantum numbers. And uh, we add them together. So an x squared and y squared and z squared, and there is a proportionality coefficient. So now there is a little geometrical argument. Um, I'm focusing your attention on a little thing where I'm moving the mouse in the lower uh, right corner. So what if instead of nx and y and z, we will have just Cartesian projections, nx and y and z, like uh, x squared, y squared, z squared, added together equals constant. Which equation, which geometrical figure does it correspond to? Uh, anyone wants to answer? Uh, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals constant. Which surface in space does it correspond to? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you, Hanman. Correct. So the radius of a sphere is this R squared, right? So energy of the particle in the box uh, corresponds, of the equal box, symmetric box, corresponds to radius in this uh, abstract sphere, where instead of coordinates, we have quantum numbers, right? Everyone is fine with it? 
Okay, yeah, thank you. So if you are not fine, please ask uh, questions or stop me. So, uh, and since it is a surface, there are degeneracies, there are multiple states on the surface of this sphere that has have the same energy. Okay, let's keep going. So sphere radius. And now we need to uh, pick all states, all quantum states, that instead of uh, we will have a thickness of a sphere from R to R plus delta R. So how many states uh, are on this sphere, on this uh, in this layer? So here we are using the geometrical argument so before going forward i would like to ask you if you have only two dimensions and you have radius of a circle how many quantum states uh, how many quantum states what is the will be the area inside a circle like area of a circle. Pi r squared. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Haley. Right? So everyone agrees. Area of a circle. But if our quantum, so in space of quantum numbers, we draw a sphere and find number, amount of quantum numbers as an area of this uh, uh, circle. Uh, circle. Um, if instead of the circle, if you have three dimensions, we need the volume of a sphere. So what is the volume of a sphere? Anyone remembers or just reads from the screen? Four thirds pi r cubed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Haley. So it is our... Uh, High school heritage for certs uh, pi r cube. So it is amount of quantum states, oh, amount of quantum states uh, inside the sphere. Uh, Amara, welcome. Thank you for joining. Now, um, what if our quant um, quantum numbers take only positive values, right? Not plus and minus, but only plus. So if we consider X dimension, we take only positive, it means we take half of the world, right? We chop the space on, so it will be one half. Then we chop uh, Y dimension on half. It will be one half times one half, one quarter. And then we have Z direction, we chop it once again. So it will be one half, one half, one half, one eighth. Therefore, we need uh, to say not a volume of a sphere, but octant, one eighth of, uh, of a sphere. So one eighth times four third uh, PR cube. Next question, how many quantum states will be on the surface of a sphere or what will be the area of a sphere of a, if, if radius is known? Four pi r squared. Uh -huh. And we, we received it just by taking a derivative of a volume, right? Haley, is it correct? I don't know, I just Googled it. Oh, okay. But uh, one can um, take volume, right? And then make a derivative in respect to radius. How the volume changes if you slightly increase the radius. And then it will show the area or volume of a, of a thin layer. And it, it will give exactly the same equation as, as Haley provided. So uh, amount of quantum states uh, on the radius R, R 
will be proportional to r squared. Okay, going to the next uh, slide. So, volume and then uh, amount uh, surface times increment of a radius. So, the equation on the bottom shows how many quantum states uh, have energy in the, in the range corresponding to radius r and corresponding to the radius r plus delta r in this ab abstract space. So, it will be radius squared times uh, infinitesimal increment in this uh, factors up front. Now, what if we need to check how the total amount of uh, states in the range? I'm, I'm returning back to what we already did. So one eighth for third PR cubed, right? So like phi capital is amount of states. And um, if we know that energy on the surface of the sphere is proportional to radius squared, then we can invert this yellowish equation and find that radius is a square root of energy. And then this radius a square root of energy can be plugged into number of uh, states inside the sphere. So here the power is R cubed and R equals a square root of energy, which like energy to, to the power one half. So E to the power one half to the power third will give the uh, energy to the three halves. Let me double check if everyone is happy with this uh, equation. So please uh, show, okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So here we can use this uh, information to rederive the movie for three uh, of those uh, for three dimensional box that we have seen at the beginning of the of the meeting so the definition of density of states is derivative of amount of states in respect to the energy on the previous slide, we had that the amount of states as function of energy was energy in the power three halves. Now we just apply calculus and take derivative. Energy in the power three halves, derivative. So three halves come to, uh, to, to the front and the power of uh, independent variable reduces by one. So we go from three halves to one half. So density of states is energy in the power three halves, which looks like this uh, square root or flipped parabola. Let me double check that this derivation makes everyone happy. Please confirm if it makes sense. Amir, okay. Uh, Steven, Amara, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, going forward. Now, the uh, concept of so called Fermi energy. As we screen through 
orbitals starting from lowest to highest, they have different amount of electrons per orbital. If the sub gaps, if a band gap is very big, if the uh, system experiences zero Kelvin, absolute zero, then all occupied orbitals are truly occupied, or unoccupied are, are have occupation zero. But if the gap is small and temperature is high, this um, occupation changes continuously. And this equation uh, follows up from uh, statistical uh, mechanics of fermions, and it is called Fermi zero distribution. So here is a functional form the exponential energy of a state minus Fermi energy divided by temperature and fraction. And if one just process this equation, one sees that it is a continuous change from one below Fermi energy to zero above. If temperature is high, it is a continuous change. If temperature approaches zero, it will be an instantaneous drop. So definition of, of Fermi energy is when occupation of orbital changes from one to zero, right? So basically, Fermi energy is the energy on a sur on the on a surface of a sphere of this uh, fer Fermi sphere. So we have occupied orbitals until certain uh, point, and then all orbitals are, are empty. So here in this uh, little slide, I was showing the multiplication of density of states times occupation, right? So above Fermi energy, uh, there are states, but there is no occupation. Below Fermi energy, the, there are states which have some degeneracy and they are occupied. So why do we need it? If we want to find again, if you want to play with total number of uh, electrons, or if you want to find expectation value of energy, only the region of energies from zero to Fermi energy uh, makes contribution to results. Anything, any properties of unoccupied orbitals do not contribute. So Fermi energy is just a uh, border between occupied and unoccupied states. Mm -hmm. Now we have four minutes and uh, we need to go uh, for last four steps. So let's find expectation value of uh, energy of all electrons inside one box. To find expectation value, one needs to multiply probability by the independent variable. So pro uh, independent variable is energy, probability is density of states times occupation. So G is DOS, F is Fermi. And we can either define Fermi uh, as being either zero to one or just uh, remove uh, Fermi and perform integration from zero to Fermi energy. So total expectation value, total energy inside a box will be integral from zero to Fermi density of states times energy. Density of states is square root of energy or energy to power one half times energy will be e to the power three halves. If you perform integration, the power of polynomial increases by one and we get power five halves. So it is energy inside one box. Everyone is happy? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, going next step. Uh, now let's count the number of electrons uh, in a box uh, as a function of Fermi energy. So in this equation, we remove the energy. We just integrate over 
density of states times occupations integrated over energy. We can remove Fermi distribution and just perform integration from zero to energy Fermi uh, e to the power one half upon integration it increases uh, from one half by one to three halves and the result will be energy Fermi in the power three halves. Uh, it was it is number of electrons inside one box in terms of Fermi energy everyone is fine okay yeah thank you um yeah we are going much quicker now now we are going to invert one of these uh, equations so we've got two two results one that energy is fermi energy five halves number of electrons is fermi energy in three halves why don't we invert this red circled equation and express fermi energy as number of electrons so if we invert then uh, it will be energy fermi energy will be proportional to number of electrons into the power two-thirds let me double check so uh, inverting fermi energy as function of number of electrons will be n to the power two-thirds make sense okay so we are very very close uh, now we do have Fermi energy or as a function of number of electrons. Now we can plug in this Fermi energy into the equation for energy. So Fermi energy into equation of energy. So uh, here is our result of inversion, two thirds. Here is our energy inside the box as Fermi energy in five halves. So we just plug one into another. So we plug. Uh, number of electrons in a box uh, two thirds this would be fermi energy into the power five halves so two thirds in the power of five halves two and here and there will be cancelled and total energy inside one little box of this universe will be number of electrons inside the box in the power of five thirds uh, Please confirm if it makes sense. Okay, good. Thank you. And now we need just to uh, agree that if we divide number of electrons by volume, it will be density. If you want to stay innocent, if you want to keep math correct, we need to uh, compensate it by multiplying by V. Divide and multiply by V. And V volume is uh, uh, volume is size of a box uh, cubed. If box uh, is taken into power five thirds, we need to keep five thirds here and there, here and there. But these details of this uh, box to the three to the five thirds can be referred to as a constant. So in summary, the energy inside one box will be a constant times density of electrons to the power of five thirds right and uh, we are we are almost there so it is in one box now we need to uh, make summation over all boxes or just integrate over the three-dimensional space so we take energy of uh, each box in uh, which is density to five thirds integrated over three dimensional space and get the total energy of uh, of the universe so we are not going to uh, take this integral it, it is basically the the answer so density five thirds integrated over space and all constants merged together are referred to as fermi constant because Fermi is everywhere. So by this little exercise, we 
get an illustration of a concept that if we know the density, we can find total energy, right? And the total energy is expressed as integral over density in some uh, power, which is a functional. So functional of a density gives energy. Uh, those of you who already run some DFT calculations uh, or attended conferences may have seen expressions like this. So total energy can be expressed as a functional of total density locally, depending on R. Then it is called local density approximation. At the higher level, it depends also on the gradient on derivative of density. And then it is called GGA, generalized gradient approximation, which uh, is uh, most typical in uh, material uh, science today. So with this, we have uh, completed the program for today. So um, meeting is done. Uh, everyone is welcome to disconnect. I'll stay here to answer any questions and uh, looking forward to see you tomorrow at uh, 11. Okay, I'm open. If, if there are questions, please, please start uh, formulating them. I have a question. Yes, please. Um, the GGA, can you say again, what was that second term? Generalized. No, that term in the actual Gradient equation. Approximation. The delta. N not delta, nabla. It's like no. tri tri triangle, uh, inverted triangle. Like typically we draw triangle pointing up mm -hmm. and nabla is triangle pointing down. What does this mean? It means derivative over space. Oh, okay. So if you have one dimension, we just uh, write this partial d dr d dx, right? But if we take derivative over all three simultaneously, d dx d dy d dz, then it is referred to as gradient. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, here is a like simplest example. If you have potential energy surface, which is one function of three variables. Agree. Now we apply gradient operator gradient uh, to potential energy surface, and then we will get forces, force field in each like potential ground state. Potential has one value at each point, and force has three components at each point. Like force is a vector. Okay. And potential is just a scalar. So gradient converts scalar to a vector. Gotcha. Okay. And why do you have to add this piece into the more complicated version? Uh, it increases precision. It's same like in Taylor series, including increasing higher derivatives uh, makes feeding equations more, more, more and more precise. So adding derivative allows to Mm, represent energy as function of uh, density in, in a more precise way. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the question. Uh, Dr. Killian?